could both paint an ideal scenario mm -hmm. for the Bears and their two top 10 picks. Peter, how would you draw up that masterpiece? It's such a cool thing to have two top 10 picks because you can get two franchise cornerstones. I thought what Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans did last year in Houston has set the Houston Texans on a path for greatness. At the very least, for the next five years, all those guys are under rookie contracts. You know you have cornerstone on offense, and you have cornerstone on defense. Many years back, when the Ravens first got to Baltimore, they had two first-round picks, not top 10 picks. They drafted Jonathan Ogden with their first pick, and they got Ray Lewis with their second pick. <laughs> Oh. They were set for the Oof. next decade, and they won a Super Bowl with those guys. There have been other two first-round teams that have not had success. I mean, we talk about Justin Gilbert and Johnny Menzel with the Cleveland Browns. That did not work out for Cleveland. Even yesterday, I was talking about Aaron Donald being a home run. They drafted uh, a, a young man out of Auburn, Greg Robinson, second overall in that draft. And what could have been had they had just mm. taken Zach Martin and, or Odell Beckham or Mike Evans instead? You go down that list, and you start thinking, it's almost not good enough for the Bears to just get Caleb Williams. To be truly set on the right path, you need to nail the second one. And I love that idea of Ogden Ray Lewis. I love the idea of C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. I love offense, and I love defense. And I look at defense, and you've got Montez Sweat as this star, new young pass rusher coming off the defensive end spot. I like that Dallas Turner out of Alabama coming off as a compliment. And you put him in there as well. You get Caleb and you get Turner from two blue chip programs. Both of these guys leaders, both of these guys the best at their position groups this draft. I, I would be shocked if Turner's not the first defensive player taken. I'd be shocked if he's not the first pass rusher taken in this draft. If you can come out of this thing with two top 10 picks. Now you got receivers. I know we love Adunze and we love neighbors and we love that. You've got receivers this, this offense. Season. When you got DJ Moore and you've got Keenan Allen, you don't maybe have that that young up and coming guy, but you've got two guys. <laughs> DJ Moore's young. I think he's 25. Yeah. Right? You've got two guys that are, are are alpha receivers. You've got receivers. You've got weapons on offense. Give me Caleb and give me Dallas Turner, who I think is going to be a great star pass rusher, especially with him and Montez Sweat both coming off the edge. Uh, this is this is a very good time to be a Bears fan. I know it's only March, so you're saying, yeah, let's see in October, November. But when the potential is there to get two franchise cornerstones in one draft, the year after you already went seven and ten and you weren't a one and sixteen team, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. I want more receivers. No, mm. We already got receivers. Well, let's add another receiver. I'm going to say go out there and get Rome Adunze. He is a guy that can light it up. And I know, yes, they have DJ Moore. They traded for him last year. They just traded for uh, Keenan Allen to be there. Keenan Allen, a guy that does most of his damage in the slot. Put Rome Adunze on the outside. You got your 11 personnel, three wide receivers out there. You got Cole Komet at tight end. Also brought over Gerald Everett. And then you have Swift in the backfield. Set your young quarterback up with every single weapon that he can have. You just drafted Justin Fields. I know Poles didn't draft him, but they invested in Justin Fields being there, going to get DJ Moore. It didn't work out. Make sure this one works out. Go and get all the help that you possibly can. You'll get a defensive and a pass rusher. We'll get that in the second round, the third round. We'll find some freak athlete. We'll hone his skills, and we'll teach him how to get to the quarterback. I want to pair these two guys together. And it started at the combine. Roma Dunze was asked about playing alongside Kayla Williams. And what do you think he had to say? Listen to it here. You know, I got to see Caleb firsthand. I got to see his talents and abilities. So, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, um, and I know that he, he has an incredible talent. And, you know, I know he's a student of the game and someone who, who brings a lot of passion and a lot of desire to the game. So, of course, you know, to be paired up with him, it, it, would, be, it would be something special, I think. Being a rookie at the same time is something different, it's special. You have rookie meetings all year long, Mondays where the day ends, and all the vets go home, you're staying in there for another hour, hour and a half, having meetings, talking about all types of life situations. You're there early for OTAs, you show up early for training camp. Rookies spend so much time together, separate from the rest of the team. What a perfect time to pair a quarterback first overall with a ninth overall pick and have this combination, this connection, and built this chemistry from day one for the Chicago Bears. A quarterback in Kayla Williams, a guy that can possibly become the best quarterback ever to put on a Chicago Bear uniform, give him a terrific receiver in Roma Dunze and watch these two guys grow together and see what they can do. And for Roma Dunze, you walk in 
and you don't have to be an absolute stud in the guy right away. You have veterans to learn from, to teach you the game, show you how to be a pro, and a Keenan Allen and a DJ Moore, and you can come and groom and go into yourself and develop alongside your quarterback. Two rookies growing together. I want to see that happen. Kyle, you know so much. You're at training camp every single year. What do you see from the Chicago Bears team? I think it's a great topic with that nine pick. We know the one. What are we doing with the nine? I think the way you set it up is perfect because Peter's saying, you know, draft outside, get the pass rusher, and Jason's saying, no, 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 get ready for the quarterback. The Bears are the Bears are nesting right now. You know, like they're the 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 new baby is coming and they're getting everything ready. Jamie, I'm sure you can relate, although it's third kid, so you're probably not. I hear you. Um, get the crib, <laughs> get the get the white noise, paint the beautiful color, get the toys. Like we have to just put this beautiful child down and in the perfect surroundings and warmth and comfort. So I've been going back and forth. I'm thinking, all right, Caleb, we, we got DJ, we brought in Keenan, they got Komet and you got Swift. They're like, okay, we're fine. We also need to make sure that you don't have to score 48 points a game as a rookie. Let's get some defense. We did the thing. We already said, your, your little nursery is fine. Now let's get a defender. And yet I remember thinking when after they drafted Justin Fields, just saying, God, this has to work. This has to work. It didn't work. So now with Caleb, I'm saying this has to work. I'm saying th the hell with it. Bring in more, just more, more receivers, more running backs, more linemen. If you want to get a Dunze at nine, great. Get him. I, listen, I don't care if you say let's burn this thing down and go up and get Harrison. I don't care. Bring him in. I don't even know how the offense would work with all those wide receivers. They'll figure that out. Every single little piece of investment that they can make in Caleb Williams is so much more important than a second complimentary pass rusher to Monza's sweat. And I know that's important too. I just like, my God, this, this Caleb Williams is, is the Christ child for the city of Chicago. We, we need to make sure that everything is there. I don't care if they spend every pick in the draft on wide receivers the tackles, guards, tight ends, just it all goes under Caleb Inc. If this thing doesn't work and we're sitting here three years from now, it's just, it's apocalypse in Chicago. So I would love a pass rusher, Peter. I would love, you know, an offensive lineman, maybe even better. If a Dunes is there, just grab him and then get a wide receiver in the second round. It's all hands on deck. This has <laughs> to work, please. Kyle, how much do you think that opinion plays? I think it plays regardless because of what happened and what has unfolded with Justin Fields. But how much do you think it plays more with the fact that Jordan Love has become Jordan Love and the Lions are now like behaving differently than they ever really have before in this division? All of a sudden, the Bears, it's like you don't have any time anymore to let this, you know, fester in the way that they have. Like how much added pressure do you think the division provides this decision? Sure. It's been festering for 105 years. <laughs> it's nuclear winter. <laughs> the division, absolutely, yes. Jordan Love, the next installment of the Packers deal with the devil. The golf thing finally is working. We don't even know what the Vikings are going to do in the draft. They may do something radical, too. But, like, listen, we, we all know this. If Caleb doesn't work out, Ryan Poles is gone. Matt Eberflus is gone. Mm -hmm. We all know that. They know that. So, yeah, the Lions and the Packers are a problem. But the Bears' problem is the Bears, and it has been for a very, very long time. They can't mess this up. He, this, this, <laughs> this has to work. I'm, I'm actually getting nervous <laughs> talking about it. It's just a disaster. It has to work. Draft a wide receiver. I don't care. I'd rather, I'd rather they go, you know, three and fourteen, and Kayla Williams throws for 4,800 yards and 40 touchdowns, than they go eight and nine, and he's just not that great. I don't care. In year one. Please work. Help this man. Help him help them. Please. Kyle, Kyle, yes. uh, they have the first overall pick. Everyone expects yep. it to be Caleb. He's going to have his pro day today. And it's like, we've done this for so many years of the show. You and I have been talking football forever. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, here we go. Pro Growing up in Chicago, never having that first overall pick, does it feel different now to you as it's like, oh, pro day, Caleb? What? Like, are you excited to watch Caleb mm. Williams' pro day? And are Bears fans anticipating this whole thing? Or are they, like, m covered with mirth and dread that, like, this has got to go wrong? All right, it's a good question. I think what a lot of Bears fans are still doing, and I think it's really unhealthy, they're, they're still out on the streets with knives fighting about Justin Fields. 
I, I've seen it. Yeah. They, he's gone, guys. Yeah. I've seen the mock-ups. He's in a Steelers jersey. He is a backup quarterback <laughs> in Pittsburgh. You got to let him go. It, that's over. So they should be very excited. This is the Chicago Bears Invitational right now. And you know, last year, they had the number one pick, and they didn't get to enjoy all the spoils of it. They, didn't, they traded it, and God bless them. They should have. But guys, Bears fans, we, you can't keep dragging this around. Justin Fields is gone in the wind. Poof. This is a great, exciting day for Bears fans. It's going to be a show. This guy is so talented, mm -hmm. and you've seen the Mahomes comps, and you've seen the highlights and all that. Yeah. Listen, there are Justin Fields fans, Peter, on Twitter right now, like, making jokes about Caleb Williams crying with his mom. It's so negative, and it's so toxic. Yeah. This I should know. be a positive thing. He's coming to town, guys. Let's celebrate it. Today's day one.